Monster Cast Demeter 1, 2, and 2 on its list day. Ah, yes, list day, and today we're going to be looking at the best monster card in every monster type in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. There are 25 monster types in our beloved card game. Some are better than others. We are going to do our best to rank these not only as the best monster in every type, but the best card in the list. So it's a list within a list. Neat. Not to say that any card on this list is bad, half of them are banned, but what this allows us to do is an interesting thought experiment when analyzing card design. Some of these monsters' types are a boon to their abilities and makes them a better card for it, whereas others are perfectly fine on their own and their typing is actually kind of incidental. So in a way, we're almost ranking these cards based on how well they play with their generic outside support, and whether or not the type that they are has really anything to do with the card. Every entry on this list will have two cards, an honorable mention and the actual entry. There are over 10,000 cards in this game, so, you know, that's a lot of monster cards. It would be pretty hard to pick just one. And I'm gonna have to split this video up into two parts because uh, I normally, it's hard to get a top 10 down to like a 20 minute video. Without further ado, let's get started. The first one on our list is actually probably the weirdest one on the list, so it's good to get this one out of the way first. For the Creator God entry, yes, that is a type of monster in Yu-Gi-Oh, is Creator God Hrakti. She's also the only one of her type, so she's also, by that logic, the worst one. So that's why we're doing her first, because she's a win con, you gotta sack the three other god cards. I don't know how good that is. It's one of the best effects in the game to win the game. However, uh, if you can have all god cards on board, you're probably winning anyway, so it's probably a win more move. She's also an OCG card, which I tend not to include, but she is so uniquely unique, I figured I would at least bring her up. All right, now we move on to the more normal items. For Divine Beast, which we are going to say is the worst typing in the game, mostly because it is just very under-supported, Atlas the Terminator is our runner-up. This big boy has the most inherent protection, even though he's not as much supported as his big brother, Ra, but on his own as a standalone boss monster, he's okay. 4K beat stick, kinda some self-protection, you know, sets a pick on his summon, it's not so bad. But no, our pick for Divine Beast is going to have to go to the Wing Dragon of Ross Sphere Mode. Wing Dragon of Ross Sphere Mode uh, is one of those weird ones because it's kind of good by accident. I don't know if when this card was ever printed, it was ever intended to be used to break your opponent's board. And it just feels like what they were trying to do was emulate the duel between Merrick and Mai by having it like be on one side of the field and then move to the other. And then they accidentally created one of the best pieces of uh, board clearing removal that we have in the game. The next type on our list is Reptile. Reptile is certainly a great representation of what one end of the spectrum looks like. Its generic support is really good with cards like Snake Rain. However, there really isn't a deck that utilizes this outside support, so therefore any type synergy uh, it gives you no points towards the cards. Our runner-up is the Tyrant Neptune for being able to copy that Lyra Loose card and hit for an absurdly, almost comical amount of damage. No, that's a lot of damage! Again, seems really good almost by accident, but you know, it did get preemptively banned in the TCG because the combo is just real. But no, the number one spot is going to go to our best friend Snack. Danger Suchinoko is an absolutely wonderful extender because unlike the other danger monsters, whether you whiff or not, he just summons himself. The question is, did you get to draw the card or not? Being a dark level three is also pretty good. But as you can see, neither of these two really seem to benefit from being reptiles. So that's why they got ranked pretty low because they, they really could have been anything. Other than the fact that Snack is a snack. And so why else would he be? Ooh, we're finally already hitting one of the newer types in the game. Worm, worm, worm. No, not the sausage people, the monster type, the discount dragons. Prevailing theory is that this type was created so they could make fun, cool looking dragon monsters without typing them as dragon so they don't benefit from all of the dragon stuff. Hint, hint, dragon is much higher on the list. <laughs> Runner up, we got VFD, very fair dragon. King of All Calamities is an absolutely fantastic rank 9 monster and single-handedly makes the level 9 monsters you can make it with that much more better. Before that, there was really nothing you could do with a level 9. It might as well have been a level 10. For pretty much just locking your opponent out of whatever attribute you, you want. Pretty fun. But nah, I think, I think we're gonna have to give it to, and begrudgingly so, 
Masterpiece, the true Draco slaying king. This absolute mad lad has decided that instead of tributing monsters for his tribute summon, he tribute your back row instead. You know, because when you're based on an absolutely archaic summoning mechanic like tribute summoning, the only way you're going to be viable is to fucking cheat. It's incredibly disrespectful. Not only that, but he becomes unaffected by the card types, monster, spell, or trap, depending on what you sacked for him, which is honestly a pretty clever and neat idea for a tribute summoned monster. Ugh. And on top of all that fun, awesome sauce, he also has a quick effect to pop stuff. Feels pretty good to me. That's some pretty good control, actually. Poor Pyro, you're just the fire attribute written twice. It's incredibly disrespectful. For the runner-up, we're gonna give it to Kandal for being part of one of the best ritual support archetypes that we have in this game. If you're interested in seeing some really good ritual monsters, check out my previous video here and the end card at the end of the video. And what do you know? It's a pyro. Yeah, these, these bottom ones, they really have nothing to do with their own typing. I mean, it's a fire on a candle, so that's why it's pyro, but there's, you could have named it anything and then changed its type accordingly. This, it has nothing to do with it. But no, we're gonna give it to Scattershot. You send this guy to the grave, you blow up the field, do some burn damage, feels good, man. Basically, Regeki at will is a pretty solid strategy, especially in that the midlife of Yu-Gi-Oh. Has it really been that long? Eh, no, that's late to mid. That's late to mid. That's that's like XE, right? But again, uh, him being a pyrotype does not give him too much. Again, it's just because of what they decided to draw it as. I guess that's what it is. Water is one of my favorite attributes in this game. All of the types that seem to get lumped in with the water attribute are just some of the most fun decks I have ever played. Sadly, one of them has to be the worst of the water types, and we're gonna go with fish. Fish really should be better. You get a bunch of them, uh, there's a bunch of fish in the sea, they should be based on swarming, some of them kind of are. Trouble is, they just kind of don't do what some of the other water types do better. Sure, they actually manage to benefit from some of the generic support that we have in the game, thus boosting them above the previous entries. A lot of that, however, is tied to their attribute as water and not to them as being fish, necessarily. So, uh, this is a bit wishy-washy. And we're going to give the honorable mention of Fishborg Blaster, the shit's banned. It's also a tuner that can just keep recurring itself from the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, we can never have this thing back. But I think I'm going to actually give the spot to my homie, Super Ancient Deep Sea King Coelacanth. For the cost of a discard, you too can summon just literally your entire deck from to, to the field. There are so many FTKs that this boy can do simply because he can just cherry pick any fish you really want. His biggest hindrance? He's not the easiest to get on board, but I'm pretty sure recently we this, there was that stupid combo where somebody figured out how you could do it super. Yeah, this card is one of those things where it's just waiting for the right support to, to be banned, or at least be an absolutely power play. Big fishy boy. Hey, we got two of the water types in a row. That's kind of fun. Next up is Sea Serpent, and our honorable mention will be Molen Glacia. Nothing like the Mermail player mulling you turn one to lose cards out of your hand. Feels good, man. But again, he shows you some of the problems with our whole does the type matter discussion, because Mole cares about water. He doesn't care about uh, sea serpents. So uh, that is definitely typical of these types and is a point against them. When we eventually do the attribute one, it's going to be a point for him, I suppose. But because he is a sea serpent that does give him some benefits, it means he is searchable by dragoons. Cool. But instead, we're going to ironically give this to a non-water attributed sea serpent monster, Lavalval Chain. He banned, he good, he a walking foolish burial in a rank four monster. If you don't understand why that's really powerful, uh, you must be new to the game and never played with Lavalvo Chan. This Bernie boy has set up so many crazy FTK and OTKs. He's just a really good monster. I miss this. I miss him. I miss him so much. I know I know why we can't have him, but... Do you know this thing can top deck stuff too? The next entry is my bugs! Yes, bugs certainly have that mid-tier feel when it comes to... Does it matter that I'm an insect or not? They have some decent support, some oddly specific anti-support, and one of the weirdest cards in the game. And two of them are actually some of the most broke. Again, they don't, it, them being insect is kind of incidental, but um, level leader is just disgusting. I really wish we just had a couple of formats where we could use this with Link Monsters just to see like what it was like to go even further beyond. <laughs> 
but I get why we can't. But if we did have it, then we should definitely have the actual entry for the list, Max C. <laughs> It's kind of funny that these two would actually be like mortal enemies. As a quick effect, this hand trap can be sent to the graveyard so that you draw a card every time your opponent summons this turn. You can use it preemptively to bully your opponent into doing nothing, or you can chain it to something like, I don't know, instant fusion to at least get the one for one and then bully your opponent into not doing anything. God, I love this card. It's a thunder. Da, 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 da. Is that, is that, is that, is that the lyrics for that? I don't, I don't like this one. Denko Seka. Y'all know me. I play Trolley Set 5 Pass decks. This thing tells me no. I don't like that. However, it, it is, it is pretty impressive just how frightening one normal summon could actually be. I don't think there is any monster in this game that quite strikes the fear in the heart of man like Denko Seka does when played at the right time. Doesn't matter how many times you look at your three back row, none of them are the solemn warning. Checking them again does not make one solemn warning. I'm sorry. <laughs> but now we're actually gonna give it to our bandy boy here, Thunder Dragon Colossus. Ah, see, as we're getting down the list, you guys can start seeing that them being the type they are actually is starting to matter and it's benefiting the card. See what we're doing here? I think this is actually kind of, I, th I think this is neat. If the interaction with your own type is that only you can use Kaminari attack in part of your strategy, uh, okay, fine, that is a bit cheesy, but hey, you know what? That is a start, that's a start. And that's cool because no one would ever run that card otherwise. But on his own merits, the card is fantastic. It's a walking mistake in its effect and in the fact that it was printed. Ha <laughs> ha, got him. I actually don't think the card's that broken. It's very annoying to deal with, it can protect itself from destruction which is also pretty obnoxious i think people just got sick of dealing with it so they banned it all right our next entry is a bit more boring a bit of a potted plant as it were it, it, it's the plant type Honorable mention is gonna go to Verde Anaconda for being Dragoon's Whipping Boy. <laughs> Any deck can make that stupid fusion now that Anaconda's a thing. What a pain in the ass. But if you're, you know, not being a jerk and you're actually trying to use this thing in the deck it was kind of for, or just any other fusion in the game, just please make anything else, then hey, you know what? The card does what it does, it does it quite well. And being able to, like, use Super Poly out of the deck is a, that's a pretty, that's pretty neat. I gotta give it that. I gotta give it that credit. But we're gonna give it to Dandelion. When this card's sent to the graveyard, make some tokens, too, specifically. Oh, but what am I supposed to do with those tokens? It says right here you can't use them for a tribute summon. <laughs> oh no, whatever will we do? Yeah, uh, this thing is just pure advantage. There might be something that said that Glow Up Bulb could have been one of these two spots too. The card's also fantastic. We're starting to get some really good cards here. This is starting to get hard to do. And, and we are really starting to benefit from the fact that we are plants. That is a thing that is helping the cards because we have things like Lone Fire Blossom. Aha! The experiment, it works. But that's all I'm gonna say about this card because it, I associate it too much with boring wombo combos that take too long to do. So we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> All right, so we already had one new type on the list that was way under supported. Uh, that's a damn shame too, because there, there, there is certainly something they could do there with the worms, but nah, we're up to the OG new type in Yu-Gi-Oh. The steel dark type, as it were, psychics. And our honorable mention psychic is gonna be Psyframe Lord Omega for being an absolutely ridiculous level eight synchro monster that allows you to knock a card out of your opponent's hand and has one of the very few unique distinctions of allowing you to add a face down banish card back to your graveyard. The crap you banished off the pot of desires is normally pretty much out of the game, but your Omega, he is your one saving grace if you wanna try to use your pot of desires as the world's wonkiest search card. But now we're gonna give the spot to resident smart boy, Mind Master. Here's a card that some people watching this video may have never even seen, because it's been banned for so long and we've had so many new players in the game uh, the last couple of what, like seven years? Some of, the, some of these are old. It's a level one, it's a light, it's a tuner. Oh, it's off to a great start. Pay 800 life points, tribute one psychic type monster to summon one level four or lower monster from your deck. It's not once per turn. <laughs> oh no, the loops, brother. Are they done? Just reading the card, you might think, okay, sure, that's a bit clumsy because not only are you paying life points for cost, you're sacking a monster. And you can't even sack itself by its own effect. But yeah, if you can get two psychics on board, 
uh, you're gonna your your opponent's about to have a bad time because you can just like go through your absolute entire deck. And once you get every single monster in your deck in the graveyard, depending what those monsters are, you're you're about to end your whole opponent's whole career. And with needle fiber, oh uh, boy, could you imagine? Oh boy. All right, I feel like this one might be a bit controversial because I think some people might think this should be a little bit higher on the list. And I don't think you're necessarily wrong. It's just the the top 13 are just all so good. Someone had to be in the bottom, I guess. The Beast Warriors. And for our honorable mention, we're gonna do that Luna Light Tiger thing because again, the loops. That is not a hard once per turn on that pendulum effect. Man, if you could just get this thing back in your hand somehow, it's almost like you could just keep using it. Hmm. Hmm. Now, if we're gonna give it to Broadbull or Zodiacs by any extension, because they basically break the XC mechanic, making it work the way it's not supposed to, making a rank four or whatever monster with only one guy, that's not how XCs are supposed to work. Catapulting us into the modern day of Yu-Gi-Oh, where everything is just, you thought it was fast before, now it's fast. Basically, just training wheels for Link monsters. <laughs> Deck was so good, it even worked under Master Rule 4. Oh boy. And I really like Broad Bowl for this spot because in the theme of our list of things are types and it helps that they're the type, this thing is literally a rota for its type. It searches stuff of Beast Warriors. Feels, it feels good, man. Too bad it's banned. All right, guys, instead of uh, sponsors, we're going to do a pack opening. My buddy Thomas sent me some of this stuff on a mail day the other day. So we're going to we're actually going to finally get to this stuff. He sent me three of these repackaged things. The first one is a mushed monster box. Let's see what's in this bad boy. All right. There's actually quite a few packs in this thing. Dimension of Chaos, Flames of Destruction, Ooh, Dark Saviors, Spell Ruler, Breakers of Shadow, Shining Victories, Breakers, other Dark Saviors, a Secret Forces and the Duelist Alliance. Holy freaking crap. Breakers of Shadow 1. Bracket, Dragon's Bind, Master Pendulum, Duelist Alliance. Nice. Burning Abyss. The Secret Forces. Kind of the pack that went along with the Duelist Alliance. Nice. Kind of hawk. Prep. Oh, Carcardi. Cool. Dark Savior. Skabgate. And. Nice. Boudicus of Shadow. Bad Luck Blast. Dynamis Rex. It's like, are these weighted or what? Nice. Can you even, can you even scale a pack anymore with like the hollows and everything? I don't even know if that's a thing. All right, Dark Saviors 2. Vampiric Orcus. Nice. Beat. Pack was beat. This is a Flames of Destruction. Oh, that's right. The weird Pendulum Spirits. Anything cool? Nice. Wind up Zen Mains. Or Zen Maintenance. Waking the Dragon's not a bad common, though. Dimension of Chaos. Dimension the Dice! If you guys want to send me a mail, uh, my P.O. Box is in every video. Uh, if there's anything cool, uh, I'll uh, open it on the channel. Sphere Karibo. Oh, this was before the days of Hollow in every pack. Because here's a Cosmo card. Wow, this is an older pack than I remember it being. Gradle Cobra is the imposter. And we'll do the Legacy Pack last. Spell Ruler. This is going to be some nostalgia, though. Fairy's Hand Mirror. Dark Witch. Kudab Turtle. Magical Labyrinth. Mother Grizzly. <laughs> Wall Shadow. You remember when there was vanillas in your packs? Oh. And last but not least for today's list, we're going to look at another Beastie Boy. Hey, it's mine. Clink. Hey, you. Winged Beasts. My harpies are not on here. I love you girls, but you need, you need a little help. We're going to give it to this big Samorg Link thing for being a giant pain in the ass and enabling infinite big chicken loops. <sighs> what do you know? It's special summons a Winged Beast from the deck. But nah, I think we're gonna give it to Zephros the Elite. As much as I don't wanna ever prop up a black wing, cause that deck's fun to make fun of. It's incredibly disrespectful. Zephros is actually really fit. He's really fantastic. Being able to bounce a face-up card you control to your hand to summon him from the grave is just really good. So good in fact you can only use him once per duel. Probably partly the reason why the tiger thing got banned, because you could bounce that, play it again, summon something up. This thing has been used in every type of wombo combo there is. He's a fantastic loopy boy. I gotta give it to him. 
that effect is just really, really versatile. That was the list. I hope you enjoyed part one. Stay tuned for part two. Oh man, this is these are a lot longer than I expected them to be. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Oh, hey losers, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Wanna watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.